Now let's move to the um, second step, like the second part, which is uh, percolation and robustness of a graph. So in this case, let's say that I look at this graph, I have this network, and then I want to know how robust it is to attacks. Let's say I randomly remove a node or an edge, then the goal is like if I keep removing those randomly or maybe target it, so I target specific connect connections or edges in the node, what is happening to the topology of, 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 the, of the graph? So we're not interested only in the topology or the structure, we're interested in, look, there is a big connected component here. I keep randomly on removing, okay, uh, different edges, but I want to know at which threshold, how many edges I can remove uh, so that I break the greatest uh, connected component. So basically, this is a complete uh, fragmentation of the network, okay? So it's like completely isolated or broken down. So this is like an active area of research. So here we say, uh, so connected components are very important because they help us understand the robustness of a graph to different attacks. Because let's say, for example, if you, if I go one step back, so if a virus is spreading in this, um, well, right, starting from this node, right, it's going obviously to quickly affect the nodes in this cluster, right? But to get this virus to propagate to the other nodes, we need to, you know, like basically go three, th through these central or important edges. But what if I isolate this? I just broke that connection. Then I can protect my network, right? And my giant component will be, my network will be resistant or robust to um, attacks, okay? There are different ways of formalizing this. So here, the size of, a connect, of connected components within a graph can be used to examine the robustness of the system to no damage or failure. So this can be done by either, you know, removing edges or nodes. So this is what we call isolating. So for example, in the brain, you're lesioning some connections. So if there is like a stroke lesion in the brain, you're just, you know, breaking down connections between different parts or anatomical regions of the brain. So how do we generally uh, evaluate this? We, we remove um, a node at a time and recompute the size of the largest component. So we want our network or graph to be integral, not to get a lot like, you know, fragmented at a large or uh, extent. So we do this randomly one at a time. And to examine, so this basically allows us to examine the capacity of the graph to maintain its connectedness under different kinds of topological attacks. Okay, so this is also what we call the theory of topological per perturbations. We can, we can perturb the graph and see how it responds. And it depends, sometimes removing uh, an edge is good if you have a virus, but other times if you're doing, you know, good transportations, like you're transport, transporting goods or you have like flow, uh, you have like internet connections, then removing actually is not a good thing. So it depends actually on, on the case and on the scenario. So let's look at this one. So here I'm defining uh, percolation. So what is percolation? So in graph theory, percolation refers to the processes that occur on a graph as nodes are being either added or removed, okay? So you have two options. And in percolation theory, uh, uh, percolation theory has emerged in the physical study. So we say a fluid, as it passes um, through a medium, it percolates uh, that material, okay? So as we remove nodes and edges from a graph, we find a percolation threshold. So this is, you know, what we will study later on in the paper, in the Nature Research paper published in 2000. Uh, we find a percolation threshold PC at which the network fragments. So we want to know, we want to automatically find a threshold where we're, when we're like keeping, when we're like removing those edges, somehow the network will completely become fragmented. So Above this threshold, we still have a large, like, uh, connected component, but below this threshold, basically, the network is fragmented into much smaller components, okay? So this is what we call the percolation uh, threshold. Now, this is the last example. So here, for example, what we have, we have the, uh, we have connectomes, brain connectomes of uh, different species, fruit fly, mouse, 
okay, and macaque. And first, how do we compute the percolation? We start with an empty adjacency matrix. We gradually add edges in descending order of connectivity strength. So we're kind of, you know, creating the graph in the, in the reverse way, okay? So we have like a, a, a graph connectome, a brain graph connectome, and we're like emptying it out and then adding the, the connections with the highest weights. And at some particular threshold, we're looking at uh, the proportion of nodes in the largest, com largest component. We're trying, we're finding the largest component, computing the nodes in that component, okay? When we're keeping on adding basically the, um, the different nodes. So what do you guys know this? For example, for the, uh, for the fly at some point, okay, for maybe the macaque here, we see that the, the size of the component is like, increasing but at this at 10 percent what's happening at 10 percent guys it becomes yeah connected so we have like a very large giant uh connected component that is emerging but below this threshold okay below like the 10 percent our network is still fragmented so this percolation threshold is very important uh in studying and you can see there is some patterns and behavior like behavior pattern when we study the connectomes of different species so this is very important so we say that <coughs> actually the percolation threshold it enables us to uh, spot the shift okay from fragmentation to the emergence of the largest component and this is what implies a phase transition so your graph is transiting from state a to state b okay your system if you're modeling a system and this rapid change happens at a critical value that we call the percolation value that depends on the number of connected components and the size mainly the size of the largest connected component in your graph so analyzing percolation processes on graphs help simulate the effect of a progressive damage to individual edges or nodes in the graph. And also graph topologies that, we say that graph topologies that withstand the fragmentation, they may explain the resilience of a network or a graph to random or targeted attacks. So this field is actually really exciting. And like um, when, um, when I attended the seminar on fooling uh, neural nets by uh, Dr. Hussein uh, Fauzi, like he talked about how we're using adversarial uh, attacks to perturb neural networks and fool them. So you guys can maybe, like in the like today, what we're trying to do is like you know look at this a bit deeper, right? And maybe we can connect, you know, topology of graphs or you know centralities, measures like that. They can help us build better defending systems. I don't know. Like graph theory is very important. We can like connect, you know, like a neural network is a graph, so maybe there is a bridge because this is actually an an old, like an, an ancient studied area in graph theory, percolation, uh, damages, resistance, resilience, all these things. So today what we'll look at is, um, we will look at this paper, Error and Attack Tolerance of Complex Networks, uh, published by Erika Albert and colleagues uh, in Nature uh, Journal in 2000, right? Uh, it's an interesting read, but before that, I'll give you a final example. So if you guys, maybe you don't recall this, but the, wor the first Wi-Fi was uh, called um, AlohaNet, and it was built in 1971, and it was like a star-like uh, network. If you guys remember, star-like is like this. So what you have, you have a hub, and the hub basically, uh, it flows information to all other nodes. So what's, ha what's going to happen to this uh, network, okay? if the hub gets attacked. Yeah, the entire network is down, right? So you're, what you're going to see is that, well, if I remove this node, first it's gonna be fragmented. Everything's gonna be fragmented, right? You have, you're going to have four connected components, singlet, singletons, and the, the network will be completely disabled. So this is why now in uh, like internet networks, they never use this again like uh, star-like networks are not very good, they're not resilient to attack, so it's not a good idea to use them, although the centrality of this node might be very high, okay?